Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Endless Runner tutorial. So in this one, we actually create a condition where we actually take the um, our character controller and that character controller detects collision with him. Now, if the collision happens in front of him like this, then it just goes ahead and um, trigger some condition, some uh, code that makes our player stop moving and also our score stop moving. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we left off, we had this over here, but um, you probably realize already, when we hit something, we don't actually die, and that is something that we need to fix right about now. Alright, so that's what we're going to do this episode, guys. Let's go ahead and open up the player motor, and I'm going to introduce you to uh, a function, a callback function. You, you see how uh, start and update are being called automatically. Then... Um, it pretty much it is called from Unity. Unity actually takes care of handling all of those functions called start and update when you inherit from Mono Behavior. But um, there's another one, and actually there there is many functions, uh, and they come with components sometimes. We have a component on our player that is called the character controller. So you remember the capsule thing? So this thing here. If I zoom on it, this capsule collider actually comes it with some callback as well and one of them is called and let's go ahead and write it down as well private I'm in the uh, player motor script by the way private void on controller collider hit like this and again you are not allowed to make any spelling mistake in this you gotta be putting the same capitals as I do so on controller collider it and it takes in a controller collider it structure like this. Now what happens with this call? It is being called every time our capsule hits something. So collide with an object. And now the, the good thing is uh, whenever it collides with an object it actually gives us information on that collision that, um, that pretty much happens. So we know using this field over here we know let's just check the collider we've hit, we know the which controller hit, so our controller, the game object we've hit, and then the direction we were going, the normal of that, we've got all kind of information. So we're using this, we can actually tell, okay, how we collide with something in front of us, or was it below us, or was it on the side, and all that good stuff, because right now, if you take a look at the level, um, while it's actually running, let me just comment this out really quickly. The way I want to do my death condition is I'd like my player to actually die when he hits something in front of him. Because if you haven't saw already, um, he can actually stick on the wall and that's okay with me. I mean, I'm holding the button right now and it does not really bother me too much. It should not die for that. It's being blocked, of course, but um, our, our player should only die if he collides with something in front of him. And that's what we're going to be testing out. So, what information do we have in this that we can use? We have something that is called point. So, hit dot point, which is the impact point in world space. Now, that point is vector 3, so you can do x, y, and z. Now, what we're really interested in is the z. So, the way we're going to do this is we're going to say if the hit point on Z is bigger than my transform.position.z plus my controller radius so my current position in Z plus 0 0.5 because that's what my um, my capsule collider has if I can just find it right here my radius so that's 0 0.5 now notice that if you move that radius it's going to increment the collision size as well and maybe you want to reduce it. Since we're, since we're here, let's just put that on 0 0.3, why not? So it's going to take the uh, position of my player, which, uh, by the way, if we put the gizmo on, on the good thing, so maybe pivot point, is right here. So we're going to take transform.position plus 0 0.3 in Z, which is going to end up right about there. And if our impact point, so if we collide with something, and that point in the world is 
further than that, then that means we've hit something in front of us. If that happens, let's just go ahead and do def, which again is a function we haven't coded just yet, so we're going to go right down here and type in def. Okay, just to test it out, let's do a debug.log dead, like so. And we're going to hit play. Hopefully our player has this um, def call down here. And as you can tell, he is getting those calls. Okay. So what do we do when we're dead? Um, let's go ahead and first have a boolean that actually checks that. So private bool is dead is equals to false because we're not dead when we start. But when we do die, then is dead is equal to true. Now using that, we can go stop our movement, so why not? We can go up here in the update and say, let me just expand that so you see, if dead is dead like this, if he is dead, then it's just return because we don't need to update our player anymore. He's dead, he's not able to move anymore. And then what else? I think that is going to be pretty much it for the player, but of course other um, other system in our map are going to use this as well. So okay, our player is dead and I'm hitting left and right, and he's not moving, so I'm not allowed to update him. Now the animation is still playing, so that's something I probably need to turn off, but I'll be doing that on my end, um, maybe a little bit later on. But what else do we need to turn off? We need to turn off this score, because this score is just, it keeps going, but we're pretty much just dead. And we also need to pop up some kind of menu saying, okay, do you like, would you like to retry or would you like to actually leave for the menu? Let's actually tackle the score first. So the way I'm going to do this is uh, you'd notice how we did it in the score when we needed to send information to the player motor. We said get component and then we call the function that we've made called set speed. Now inside of the score.cs, I will actually create a public void on def, like so. And we will be calling this from the player motor script. So player motor, I'm back inside of the player motor .cs, and I'll say um, get component of type score dot on def, like so. And I will be pretty much done with the player motor. So let me just close that. Now we know that this is being called, so inside of the score, we can do the exact same thing. So let's go up here, do a private bool is dead is equal to false. Oops, false. And when this is called, we're going to say is dead is now equal to true. Like so. Now we can go inside of the update and do the exact same thing. So if is dead, then we return. Okay, now let's hit play once more. Score should go up. I can move. I'm dead now. I can't move and the score has pretty much stopped. Alright guys, so that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching and in the next one we are going to create some kind of menu and some kind of animation that goes in with that. So guys, again thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this or if you liked the video, please leave it a like. Really appreciate that. And also, if you have any comment or question, please leave them in the comment section below. Make sure to answer them as soon as possible. So guys, I will be seeing you in the next episode.